Uh, hello, so continuing on this um, weekly contest 166, the third problem, which is problem number um, 1,283, 1, find the smallest divisor given a threshold. So the problem says we get an array of integers and uh, numbers, um, nums, and an integer threshold. And we will choose a positive integer divisor and divide all the array by that divisor, essentially. And then take the sum after dividing. And uh, what we want is to find the smallest divisor such that when we do this division and get the sum, the sum is less than or equal to threshold. And we want to round, the div with the, for the division, we want to round to the nearest integer greater than or equal to that element, right? So we want to round kind of um, down, I would say. So maybe it's math seal or something. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it, uh, this problem. So one two five. if we look at the example 1, 2, 5, 9, threshold is 6. If we divide, we can try first, like divide by 1, we will get 17. Divide by 4, we'll get um, some 7, which is bigger than threshold. But when we get to 6, uh, sorry, to uh, 5, and divide by 5, we'll get 5, right? Which is smaller than threshold. <coughs> so th this is the smallest divisor that gives us the, the result that we want. Um, and for this example here, it's 3. But if we look at the constraint here, you can see... Um, the array can be up to 50,000 numbers, and the threshold can be up to 10 to the power of 6. So right away you could see here that binary search would be very useful for this, because first the order here doesn't matter, we just need to divide and get the sum, so that means we can sort the array. Um, the problem doesn't specify necessarily that it's sorted, but I think when I tried it without sorting, it worked, so I think it kind of... Um, they just didn't set up uh, sample test cases with um, with an unsorted array, but we can anyway just sort it. Even that won't be too big because it would be n log n, so it would be still 10 to the power of 4 multiplied by a log of that, so it's not too big. Um, but um, for binary search, though, we need to define a couple of things. We need to define what is the function that we are going to test or, or the property, and then we'll need to define what is the range that we are going to run our binary search on. Um, yeah, so that's, um, let's see how we can do that. Um, so let's see how we can solve this problem. So essentially with binary search, that isn't the normal or the usual one where we are just searching for a value um, in an array. What we need to do is we kind of need to define a couple of things. We need to find our function, right? So, and we need to define like the test that we are going to do. So maybe this is equal to some value, uh, maybe this is bigger than some value, maybe something like just is good, whether this is valid or not, it will give us true or not. And then what we need is we need to find out something about this function, which is that it's, uh, or about this test here, right? Let's call it test. We need to find that maybe we get false, and then false, and then false. The test will keep giving us false, and then it will start giving us true. Or the reverse, maybe the test will keep giving us true and then it would give us false. But essentially, we, wouldn't, we, wouldn't, we can't run binary search if it's like this, true, true, and then false, false, and then it becomes true, true. This, we can't, because we can't know at which point whether going left is the right answer or going right is the right answer, right? <coughs> so, so this is... Um, so this is what we what we need to find. We need to find some property like this. And um, and so here in our case here, what are we looking for? We are looking for. So what we, what we are looking for is what needs to be here because that's what we will get the mid for, and that's what we return at the end when we are done, right? And so here our x is needs to be the divisor, right? The divisor that we are going to test. And the problem says that the threshold is, um, we need the sum after dividing, right? After dividing to be less than or equal to threshold, right? 
Um, and so what we can do is we know that threshold is 10 to the power of 6, right? And the divisor cannot be, um, this definitely cannot be bigger than threshold because then um, the sum would be necessarily, um, then, yeah, then the, 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 this would be true anyway. So what we need to do is take the divisor range. So for binary search, we need to find the function and the range of the solution of the possible solution, right? So that's what I'm trying to find out here. So the range here we can just take from one because dividing with zero will give us something that doesn't work. So we don't, we shouldn't do that. And we can go to 10 to the power of six. The other alternative is just going to the max of the array because if we, if we divide everything by the max of the array, we'll get either one for each position or we'll get zero. And that will be necessarily will definitely be less than the threshold because the problem says that the length of nums is less than or equal to threshold. So um, the other solution is just to do this and this will be faster because 10 to the power of 6 is, um, <coughs> is uh, because the, the numbers can go all the way up until, t but which is less than or equal to 10 to the power of 6. So the max, even if it's the biggest number possible, it will still be smaller, right? So we could just take the max nums, right? And now, what is the function? So the function that we need to do, we just need to find, the problem says that the sum after dividing needs to be less than or equal to threshold. So that's exactly what we are going to use. So what we need is our function needs to be less than or equal to threshold. And then our function would be f of x is just the sum after dividing. So it's just x is the divisor, right? So maybe let's just make this more expressive and give this d. And so this would be, for every element in the array, we will take, according to the problem it asks us to do, uh, so we'll just use Python's math.seal, and we'll take every number in the array, divided by d, take the ceiling, and then take the sum of this, right? Because that's what we want at the end to be less than or equal to threshold. And so we take the sum of that, and if it's less than the threshold, what should happen? So let's say we have a divisor. So the divisor will go from 1 to max of nums, as we said, right? So what is the pattern? So we are looking for one of these, right? So if it's, so if it's small, so when we increase the divisor, right, that means that the, the number, when you divide the number, it would be smaller, right? And so that means that if it was smaller for some number and then you increase the divisor, it will still be smaller, right? And so as we increase, when we find a place where it's smaller than the divisor and we find it true, if we increase the divisor, that will just, so if we have, let's say, x1, a1, a2, a3, a4, say divisor was 2, right? And then we had some s for that some sum value, right? If we increase divisor to 3, that means all the numbers will become smaller, right? So this is S1, this is D1. So that means that S1, would, because D, D2 is bigger than D1, that means that, well, S2 will definitely be smaller than S1 because this means that the numbers will be smaller, which means the sum would be smaller, right? So that means that if this value with D1 was smaller than threshold, if we take bigger values, they will still be smaller than threshold, right? So we would have, once we get true, we'll keep getting true. But <coughs> if for some value it was, let's say here, it was bigger than threshold, right? So maybe if we increase, increase it, it's still not that small. So maybe we'll have something like this. So this is entirely possible. But once we get true, we will never get false again, right? Because we'll keep increasing the divisor and the sum will keep get, getting smaller, right? And so in this problem, we want the smallest divisor. And since we're starting from 1 to the max, that means that what we are looking for is the smallest divisor. So we are looking for the first true value. Looking for the first true value. Which is basically the smallest divisor. And this is, the for binary search to work here, we will need to, the problem needs to be asking for either the first true value or the last false value, 
right? Or if we have something like this, it needs to be asking for the first false value or the last true value. Otherwise, we won't be able to solve it using binary search here. And so here we have everything set up for us. We know the, we know the function, we, want, we know the range that we are searching in, and we know the function that we will use, right? And so right now we could just um, do binary search basically saying the lower value, setting the lower value to one, setting the higher value to max of numbers, and then checking if the mid value is um, less than or e f of mid value is less than or equal to threshold, then we need to go where? We need to go right because if we go right, um, sorry, we'll need to go left because, okay, let me, let me write it. That would be easier. So let's write our binary search here. So we would have low and high value would be zero and then length of, and then the max number as we said, right? So max of nums. And we'll start doing our binary search, right? So binary search here, while they haven't met, we'll compute the mid. And then we'll check if f of mid. So f of mid is th this entire thing. Uh, actually, I'm going to change this a little bit. So I'm going to say this is good. Um, or maybe, you know what, let's just do f of mid is less than or equal to threshold. Right? So what this would mean is that maybe we are here, but maybe also we are here. Right? We don't know which true is it. There is no need to go right because if we go right, we will keep getting bigger, bigger. Um, we will keep, we will get only bigger divisors, right? But we are looking for is the first value. So either here, which means we are, we will, we need to stay at mid, or we, or here, and that means we will need to go left. Which means here, what we need to do is go left but stay at mid because maybe the solution is mid, right? So that would mean what we need to do is we will need to say our lower value. To go left, you need to set higher value, right? So you need to set higher value to mid, right? Why we c Usually we do, mid, um, we do mid minus one, but here because maybe this is the, the actual first true that we are looking for, so that's why we are doing that. And then otherwise, that means it's a false. So maybe we are here, but maybe we are also here. But in any case, if we are here or here, we have to move right to get a true value, right? So that means here we have to go right. So we need low to be equal to uh, mid plus one to go right, right? And then at the end, when both meet, we can just return high because that's the, the one that we set to a mid. And when we are done, that means they met somewhere here on the first true value. And so we need to return um, high or low for that matter because they will be equal, right? And f of mid would be just as we said here is the sum of math that's still of a divided by d uh, for a in the, in the array, right? And that's pretty much it for, for this uh, binary search. And so, yeah, the takeaway here is that think of a property that has this attribute of being false and then be becoming true, or the reverse being true and then becoming false. And then think about the range of your x value and then think about the, um, think about the function that you will use. And pretty much once that is done, you could, um, you could solve it. So the array doesn't even have to be sorted. You just need to find a pattern like this, where it, it's false and then it's true, or it's true and then it's false. Um, yeah, so let's type this into lead code and make sure it passes test cases. Um, okay, so I just typed what we saw in the overview. So this is the function. It's the sum of dividing every element by x, taking the ceiling of that. And we, let me just make this return so that we match the this is less than threshold, we match the overview, and then um, if it is, we go left because that means it's a true value, so either it's the value we are at or maybe something th that to the left of it, there are some true values still. Otherwise, it's a false, so we have to go right to find the true value. And when both meet, that means we find the solution. Um, and that's pretty much it, so let's run. <coughs> Okay, let's submit.
so yeah, that pass test cases. In terms of time complexity, you can see here, we are the upper loop here, this is all of lag of max of the numbers, right? So, which can get at most to, um, to 10 to the power of 6. Um, and then we are calculating this function inside, which is the sum, so it's O of n, which is n, the length of the, of the, um, of the array, so it's kind of O of lag of max numbers, right, multiplied by n. Um, yeah, so that's that's the time complexity there. In terms of space complexity, you are not really using it, so uh, O of 1, um, essentially. Um, yeah, so just a different way we could calculate this for the ceiling, if we don't want to use a library, um, we could just do um, essentially A, so reduce A to A minus 1, and then divide by, <coughs> sorry, and then divide by X, and then add 1. Divide by X, um, this way and then add one. Um, so just t do what the problem says, which is um, take the nearest integer greater than or equal to the element. So the nearest integer greater or equal to it. Divide, we divide, we subtract one so that we can get um, a number smaller a little bit, maybe by zero point something, and then we add one. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this problem. Uh, please like and subscribe and uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.